haven't slept in 48 hours, but I just got done running two marathons and I've done 300 push-ups and 200. I love the video this clip is from. This guy does a great job of putting examples together, a wide enough array of examples together for how bipolar two is experienced by someone. With that said though, everybody experiences it a little bit differently. For example, technically, well, a better description of what I experience is stress-induced hypomania. Um, stress-induced hypomania is the idea of the fact that for me, <clears throat> I can handle an insane amount of stress, but for very short periods of time. When I was young, I had to, I dealt with some really crazy stuff that most people never have to deal with, thank God. Um, but because of that, I got really good at just handling insane, critical, like life or death style situations. And I was just calm. I was the calm one. That was easy for me. Um, what I've never, well, what I wasn't as good at was handling chronic stress for long periods of time. Well, chronic, but by definition. <laughs> um, but the idea is when there would be like a stress, like some solid stress for long periods of time, um, my mind would go one of two ways. It would either just shut down and I would go into depression and just be done. Or I would go into hypomanic Superman mode and there are categories of stress that would lead me towards depression and categories of stress that would lead me towards hypomania. Um, and if you don't know what hypomania is, it's just basically um, manic behavior that isn't so manic that is detrimental to a person's life. Um, it's the kind of behavior where I would only need like maybe four hours of sleep every night um, sometimes it'd be like somewhere between two, sometimes as much as six, but like four or five hours of sleep. And I, when I'd wake up, I would just be on and I was good at everything. And I mean, part of that was my perception of how great I was. It was slightly conflated, but there was also the fact that I could just do a lot. And I, I already have, like, I'm somebody who is fairly creative, fairly talented, and fairly intelligent. And combine that with the idea that I can conquer everything. And the, the lack of needing like seven and a half, eight hours of sleep. And holy God, I was Superman. I really was. And from the outside, that's what it would look like. I was just on top of things, on top of things, getting it done, getting it done. And that's something that when, um, uh, that's what psychologists have, have seen, um, the, and this isn't me talking, this is, well, I'm talking, but this is, um, what psychiatrists and psychologists have found through collections of studies of patients who have come in, um, and have been diagnosed with bipolar two. They never come in when they're hypomanic because they're just on top of the world. They are killing it. They are killing it. They go in when they're depressed and then they end up getting prescribed antidepressants, which somebody who has bipolar one or bipolar two is like one of the worst things you can do is prescribe an SSRI or an SNRI to one of these individuals, generally speaking. Um, and this isn't coming from anecdotal experience. Well, some of it is, but this is coming from psychiatrists and psychologists who I follow and I, I read their material. Um, and also, you know, my doctor in the past, um, because I had been prescribed SSRIs, um, and that for somebody with bipolar one or bipolar two just exacerbates the mania or hypomania very dangerous to give them those medications. That's just a blanket statement. There's a lot of nuance around that. Um, but generally speaking, you know, 
I found out <laughs> that that wasn't what I was supposed to take. Um, that was several years ago. Um, I've been on this journey of discovery for a couple of decades now. But yes, stress-induced hypomania. And that type of hypomania has only ever shown up for me when it came to relationships. Like I'm, I'm good at a lot of things and the things I'm not very good at, I get good at quick. But my Achilles heel has always been relationships. There's a lot of detail and information that I'll eventually share with everyone regarding that. But what I can say is I learned my pattern when it comes to relationships. Oh, man. I have been developing over the last few months behaviors and habits and mental exercises to help me route the thoughts that would lead me down the road into a relationship that I shouldn't be in. I'm so grateful for that. It all comes back to learning how to love myself. Like truly, truly deciding that I am the most important person in my life because I am. Just like you are the most important person in your life. Absolutely, unequivocally. You are the best thing in your life. And I hope that you'll, if you're not already, treating yourself like you are. And you will. You're pretty good at a lot of things, too. <laughs>